Hello, everybody. And I would like to thank the organizer to give me the opportunity Um, so I, I would I would like to talk about to talk about uh, a molecule from the WNT signaling pathway Wind 5A, uh, which is involved in EMT related signaling pathway in ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer uh, has different subtypes, as you can see here. Um, the, the main um, subtype uh, consists on uh, epithelial ovarian cancer which is uh, more, more than 70% of this um, kind of ca cancer in ovarian cancer. And the EOC or epithelial ovarian cancer, it's subdivided to different types. Um, and the, among these different types, serostype, mucinostype, endometrioid, clear cell, and Brenner, uh, the serostype is more than 80% uh, in this uh, high-grade uh, serous ovarian cancer is um, um, consists on uh, more than 80% of uh, this type of cancer. So um, um, this uh, ovarian cancer is the eighth most common cancer in women, and uh, only 10 to 50% is uh, hereditary and due, due to BRCA1 and 2 mutation, 85% uh, is sporadic. And unfortunately, um, despite the good response to the first line chemotherapy, uh, more than 70% of patients in advanced, advanced stage of ovarian cancer um, recur again, and the survival uh, rate is less than 30%. Uh, so uh, what is the mechanism of uh, ovarian cancer metastasis? Um, the um, predominant um, um, pathway or the, the route for the ovarian cancer metastasis uh, is the transcellulomic pathway. This means that uh, the ovarian uh, cancer cells are shed uh, to the uh, peritoneum cavity. And then in order to survive, they, have, uh, they should be in the form of aggregates or spheroids. And the, in this um, aggregation of these cells, um, EMT or epithelial to mesenchymal transition happens. It is necessary uh, for uh, spheroid formation also for these cells. Um, in the last century, um, Stefan Paget proposed the, the model that uh, the metastasis site is not random. So uh, they proposed the theory of seed and soil. Uh, the soil for uh, ovarian cancer metastasis, the best soil is the omentome. So um, the uh, first level, the ovarian cancer cells has to attach to the um, mesothelial cells here which covers the peritoneum. And uh, then uh, for this, they have to bridge uh, these layers of mesothelial cells, which is named as mesothelial clearance, then to attach to the submesothelial extracellular matrix. And by interaction with a different kind of cells like cancer-associated fibroblast on the immune cells and different uh, paractin factors, which is necessary for the first metastatic colonization, then the tumor can be uh, can grow uh, in the omentum. So uh, the primary site and also the main site of metastasis for the ovarian cancer is the omentum. As I mentioned here, uh, the ovarian cancer says should uh, invade the mesothelial cell layer. And for this, um, we need uh, MMT or mesothelial to mesenchymal transition. And, and this uh, is associated with the uh, changement of phenotype of these mesothelial cells. Then the ovarian cancer cells could be attached to the subendothelial matrix, a submesothelial extracellular matrix, and then invade uh, omentum. So we wanted to know uh, 
what is the mechanism of uh, the, this uh, invasion and what, which si signalings are involved uh, in, in ovarian cancer, uh, EMT related to ovarian cancer progression. First level, I would like to talk about WIND 5A uh, or WNT 5A, which is a, um, a molecule um, belongs to the uh, family of uh, WNT. It's a very important uh, signaling pathway in the embryonic development. Uh, also, WIND 5A is largely expressed in the de embryonic development, but in the most of the time in the adult uh, tissue, the expression decreased. Um, and also WIN5A um, has, could play very, very different roles because uh, it's really uh, cell context dependent. It could um, signals through different types of receptors, uh, a transmembrane uh, receptors, Fritzel family, or tyrosine kinase receptors, ROARS, and RIC, ROR1 and ROR2 and RIC. And also the, uh, it needs a, a core receptor LRP5 and 6. And uh, by this way, uh, it has different effects on the cells. It could be um, implicated in the um, cancer cell metabolism, in the cell senescence, in cancer stem cell growth, in chemo resistance, um, in inflammation, which is very, which is very well known that wind 5 a is involved in inflammation, in invasion, migration, and metastasis and proliferation of cells. So um, this um, gives to this molecule a profile, a, a very controversial um, role in different kinds of cancer. Uh, it could be tumor promoting or tumor suppressive in different kinds of cancers. And the, it depends really um, how it signals and which receptors it, um, in, um, it, it, it will be used in different cells. Um, uh, is it from um, with, by binding to the receptor tyrosine kinase or with different free cells? or so uh, whatever. So um, this is very complicated um, uh, for wind 5 a um, role in different cancer. We showed previously that uh, when we overexpressed ovarian cancer cell lines with um, wind 5 a in these ovarian cancer cell lines, we have upregulation of some kind of integrins in these cells mainly alpha-5, alpha-V, and also beta-6 were upregulated in these cells. And also we showed that um, focal adhesion kinase is activated uh, um, by using fibronectin as sub substrate uh, in the culture plate. When we overexpress WIN5A in SCOF3 cells, and then after also we um, assessed migration of these cells and we observed also increased um, migration of wind 5 a overexpressed cells. Um, and this is um, in line with the other reports that showed that alpha B beta 6 integrin could be a marker for the malignant potential of epithelial ovarian cancer. And um, beta is a very well-known molecule uh, which is required for EMT uh, process. Uh, but these molecules at TGF beta is uh, in a lat latent form in the extracellular matrix, and it could be activated by alpha V integrins, um, like heterodimers of different kind of heterodimers are alpha V integrins, alpha V beta one, alpha V beta three, alpha V beta five, beta six and beta eight. But mainly TGF beta could be activated by alpha V beta six and alpha V beta eight. By binding to the RGD domains of LAP in this complex, in this uh, long latent um, TGF beta complex here, LLC. Uh, and then there is a 
conformation change. And then TGF beta is released to the extracellular matrix and it could um, perform like a signaling molecule. So um, another signaling pathway, which is also important in uh, cancer and also in development, is a hippo yaptas pathway, uh, signaling pathway. Um, this signaling uh, first level was known in Drosophila. Uh, it was discovered in Drosophila, which uh, has been shown that hippo signaling is important for the um, size of the organs and uh, organ growth uh, during the development. And briefly, uh, when um, HIPO is on, the molecules YAP and TAS here, as you can see, uh, is phosphorylated and it is degraded in the cytoplasm. When HIPO is off, um, the, um, the kinase, the upstream kinase could not phosphorylate Yapantas, and Yapantas uh, shuttle to the nucleus. And then uh, there is tra transcription of a different expression of different genes, which are related to cell survival, proliferation, and stem cell self renewal. So Yapantas, uh, these two, uh, even Yap, um, has been um, shown um, in different papers as a very important molecule or a hub molecules in cancer. In epithelial cells, uh, when it is overexpressed, Yapantas, the cells lose their cell polarity, cell contact, and cell stress is increased. And in the mesenchymal cells also, uh, the overexpression of, of uh, YAP and TAS um, leads to the increased ECM um, secretion like collagen type one, uh, alpha smooth muscle actin for cell contraction, increased cell contraction, and pro-fibrotic pro factors like CTGF and PI1. And this leads to the stiffness of extracellular matrix. So uh, in this study, we use a um, um, clinical drug, which is uh, the, the trade name is Visodine, and not named as vertiporphine, which is used for the eye disease. And it interrupts uh, the shuttling of YAP molecule to the nucleus and also interrupt the uh, interaction uh, of YAP and TAS with the TED transcription factors in, in the nucleus. Uh, so uh, we wanted to know uh, what is the relationship between bin 5 a and YAP by using this molecule. Um, before I go to the data, um, um, a very uh, a recent paper, um, a very nice paper showed also that bin 5 a and B, and B uh, could uh, be a, a upstream activator of YAP and TAS, and also a downstream target of YAP and TAS. And this has been shown in non-tumorogenic mammary epithelial cells, MCF710A, and pre-adipocyte 3T3L1 cells. This encouraged us to um, ask the questions that how wind 5A regulates the EMT mediators. And this has been shown by um, Dr. Zainab Tehrani Obadi during her PhD thesis by using 3D culture of ovarian cancer cells. First of all, we used um, uh, high-grade serous ovarian cancer specimen um, and also uh, low-grade uh, um, serous ovarian cancer and borderline uh, samples uh, related to the normal samples. We assess the expression of WIND5A and uh, receptor tyrosine kinase ROR1, ROR2, also YAP, TAS, and the downstream target genes of YAP and TAS, CCN2, CCN1, TGF-beta-1, TGF-beta-2, and TGF-beta receptor 1 and receptor 2. Uh, we observed that um, all of these genes 
are um, mainly um, showed higher expression in uh, ovarian cancer specimen related to the normal tissue. And also uh, the higher expression was observed in high grade serous ovarian cancer related to low, gra low grade serous ovarian cancer, borderline serous ovarian cancer and normal tissue. Here is a um, protein protein interaction uh, for the wind 5 a and uh, their receptors, TGF beta, and receptors and the apantase molecules. We didn't see uh, or we didn't observe a direct relation between wind 5 a and the, uh, the component of TGF beta or Yapantas. And um, the mainly this interaction is through EMT markers like snail, uh, fibronectin, um, TGF beta 2, uh, I'm sorry, CD44 and n cadherin uh, However, TGF beta is uh, directly, uh, intera could directly interact with integrin alpha V and also with YAP1 molecules. And also cake database analysis showed us that both WIND5A and TGF beta family um, are involved in HIPO signaling pathway. First level, uh, we used um, ovarian cancer cell lines, which were um, in, in which we knocked down uh, wind 5A. And uh, we observed that, um, I'm sorry, we observed that um, uh, when we knocked down wind 5A in these cells, uh, we have a strong decrease of activation of SMAT23 as effectors. And, uh, of uh, TGF beta signaling pathway in the nucleus. Uh, um, and when we treated the cells at um, wind 5A knockdown cells with recombinant human TGF beta 1, um, despite the fact that we can observe uh, SMART 2 3 nuclear localization, however, uh, it, uh, it is not uh, like. Uh, um, TGF beta uh, recombinant. We can say that we can revert uh, um, SMAT23 activation in the WIND5A uh, knockdown cells in the presence of uh, recombinant TGF beta here. And uh, this has been confirmed also by this immunoblot that you can see here that the cells that were transfected with uh, srna wind 5 srna uh, we observe decrease level of phosphospan 2 3 um then after i'm sorry i don't know why it is not possible to go uh then after we um showed that um, recombinant TGF beta could mediate or increase cell invasion and migration uh, when uh, wind 5 a is present. And uh, this means that when the cells were transfected with srna wind 5 a um, we couldn't see, even in the presence of recombinant human TGF beta, we couldn't observe increased cell migration and invasion in all uh, three cell lines that we used here. So in summary, we observed that higher expression levels of TGF beta component, uh, wind 5 a roles and HIPO-related genes in human high-grade serous ovarian cancer specimen. wind 5 a could modulate TGF beta-1 levels and subsequent SMAT23 activation in ovarian cancer cells. And WIND5A is required for TGF beta induced migration and invasion of ovarian cancer cells. Then we move to the next question. And we wanted to see what is the relationship between WIND5A and YAP1 by using this molecule vertebrophin and disrupting the shuttling of YAP1 to the nucleus. Uh, here also, as you can see here, 
um, when the cells uh, were treated with vertiporphine, um, we couldn't uh, observe, I, I, or I mean, there is a strong decrease of YAP1 nuclear localization, which is also could be reverted in the presence of recombinant human TGF beta. This is uh, also for phosphate mark 2 3. We wanted to see the relation of TGF beta signaling and the app uh, signaling. And also here, uh, you can see that um, when we treated the cells with vertiporphine, phosphate smart, uh, smart 2 3 activation is strongly decreased, which is also could be reverted in the presence of recombinant human wind 5A. Then uh, we move and uh, we wanted to know uh, what, what is going on uh, when uh, we uh, treated the cells with vertiporphine. And um, at the same time, or simultaneously, maybe in, in some lane, you can see that we treated with recombinant human TGF beta or a recombinant human wind 5A here. Uh, what is interesting in this um, um, blot uh, is that uh, in the presence of um, vertiporphine here, um, we, it, this is a confirmation of, of our immunofluorescence. We couldn't see a SMART 2 3 activation and also decreased YAP1 levels. Um, and, um, also, um, by Western blood, also we showed that uh, we can revert or increase the levels of SMAT2 tree activation and YAP1 levels in these cells. In order to, um, to ascertain that um, where, um, YAP signaling could uh, affect EMT markers, um, we assessed different genes which are related to EMT. Uh, and Caderin, snail, slug, fibronectin, demontin, and CD44. And in, uh, in all of uh, these um, cells, uh, you can see that vertiporphine decrease these EMT markers. And um, this, we observe also the reversion of uh, this decrease in the presence of recombinant in human TG, being 5A, I'm sorry. Um, next, uh, we uh, wanted to uh, know when we um, transfected the cells with sRNA, wind 5A sRNA also. Uh, hello, Dr. Kamardaj. Yeah. I'm so sorry yeah. for the interruption. Uh, actually, we're running out of time. Yeah. Okay, I go. I go to the uh, at the end. Uh, I'm. I am. The concept is very clear. Here, I am. Um, um, this is a very interesting data also. Uh, we use mesothelial cells from omentum, uh, isolated from healthy omentum, and treated these mesothelial cells with recombinant human being 5A. And obviously we observe, or clearly you can observe here, the changement of morphology of these cells. For, this is the, uh, for alpha smooth muscle actin here. Uh, you can see the staining for alpha smooth muscle actin. And, and this is, I can't see um, my, uh, my slide here because there is a panel, um, but uh, this could be a uh, SMAT 2 3 um, or YAP 1. I'm, I'm not sure what is it, but here uh, we have it. This is, this is alpha smooth uh, muscle actin. This is SMAT 2 3. And this could be YAP1 nuclear localization. When we treated these mesothelial cells, primary mesothelial cells with a recombinant human wing fiber. Um, at the end, we, um, we've done a, an experiment with, uh, for mesothelial clearance. Um, so here we have a layer of mesothelial cells and of car three spheroids, which uh, were stained with DIL. This is the fast contrast. And we, um, we could observe here, after 72 hours, 
uh, we have mesothelial clearance and the spheroids uh, he, here, this is our, our um, of car tree, uh, wind 5A overexpression, overexpressing of car tree cells here that you, you can see very clearly a mesothelial clearance here. Uh, when we transfected these cells with uh, shRNA uh, for wind 5A, um, this mesothelial clearance does not happen. And this is the uh, time course for the area that we measured for this mesothelial clearance. At the end, for conclusion, we propose this model that wind 5A could uh, inhibit uh, by a mechanism which is unknown for us, the LATS1-2 kinase activity, then YAP1 could shuttle to the nucleus and uh, increase the levels of integrin alpha V, wind 5A itself, because there is a positive feedback loop between wind 5A and YAP1. Then alpha, alpha, integrin alpha V could activate TGF beta um, complex, which is in the extracellular matrix. The release of TGF beta signal, signals uh, to the cells, then SMAT23 goes to the uh, nucleus. And it is very, very, a very recent paper, very elegantly showed that uh, the binding of YAP molecule to uh, SMAT23 uh, uh, complex uh, has an effect on the retention time of SMAT23 in the nucleus. Um, at the, uh, at the end, I want to thank all of my collaborators, uh, Dr. Uh, Sheikh Hassani uh, at the University Hospital uh, Medical uh, School of University of Tehran, Dr. Ehsan Arifian in the Department of Mi Microbiology in our uh, university, and all of these students that uh, we worked with uh, in the lab. Thank you very much for your attention, and I would be happy to answer to any questions.